which really leads me into my sermon this morning, where to go for protection and comfort today. It seems to me that so many people feel disillusioned, frightened, scared. Where is the protection and comfort? Ephesians 6.1 says, For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. You know, when times are tough, personally and globally, where can we turn? Especially when things seem out of control. We don't know whether we'll be safe. Or even maybe if we'll see tomorrow. It's good to know there is only one who has control over everything. Amen. Luckily, that one God did not leave us alone. When we can find his words to us in the Bible, and one of the best places to turn when we seek protection is the book of Psalms. Psalms are prayers to God. Often it can be difficult to express what we're feeling or thinking to God. However, the Psalms are there to guide us and to help us. Doesn't mean to say we have to follow the Psalms exactly, but it can be comforting to know that others have felt the same way for thousands of years before us. They can help us pray and put our thoughts and our concerns into words. And after Jesus died on the cross, we have a direct communication with God now on a one-to-one, -one vertical basis. I don't have to go to a priest or go to someone else to pray for me. I can do it myself just by talking inside because the Holy Spirit lives in me in that holy temple. How do I know that? Because the Bible tells me so. God's Word is alive. And the Holy Spirit uses us to teach us, to shape us, and speak to us. Hebrews 4.12 says, For the word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing the soul and the spirit, the joints and the marrow. I like this as well. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart, your heart. Second Timothy 3.16 says, All Scripture, I'll repeat that, All Scripture is God-breathed. That's in the NIV. In the ESV, the English Standard Version, it says, Breathed out by God. I like that second one. I'll read it again. All Scripture is breathed out by God. When we pray for protection, we must put our trust in God, not in our own situations. No matter how dark things may seem, we must remember that God is in control. And his plan is greater than we could even fathom out ourselves. Paul says that a conflict is not with man, but rather with the devil. Psalm 27 is a declaration of belief in the greatness of God and trust in the protection he provides. To put it in layman's terms, tranquility in the knowledge that we have in trusting God. On the dark day of the evildoer's assault, through prayer made possible in Jesus Christ. 
There's many versions of the Bible. The Message Bible helps people to better understand what they read. Sometimes the, the King James can be very difficult with its oldie English wording. The Message Bible is not a study Bible, but a reading Bible. It captures the tone and the text of the original conversation, feel of the Greek language, in a more easier and understandable way. I'm going to read Psalm 27 from the Message Bible. It's different than your King James or NIV, but it expresses it in a far meaningful way for you. It starts off by saying, light, space, zest, that's God. So with him on my side, I'm fearless, afraid of no one and nothing. When vandals, hordes ride down, ready to eat me alive, those bullies and toughies fall flat on their faces. When besieged, I'm calm as a baby. And when all hell breaks loose, I'm collected and cool. I'm asking God for one thing and one thing only, to live with him in his house my whole life long. I'll contemplate his beauty and I'll study at his feet. That's the only quiet, secure place in a noisy world, the perfect getaway far from the buzz of traffic. God holds me head and shoulders above all who try to pull me down. I'm headed for the place to offer ansoms that will raise the roof. And already I'm singing God songs and I'm making music to God. Listen. Listen, God, I'm calling at the top of my lungs. Be good to me, answer me. And when my heart whispered, seek God, my whole being replied, I'm seeking him. Don't hide from me now. You've always been right there for me. Don't turn your back on me now. Don't throw me out. Don't abandon me. You've always kept that door open. My father and my mother walked out and left me. But God took me in. Point me down your highway, God. Direct me along a well-lighted street. Show my enemies whose side you're on. Don't throw me to the God, dogs, God. Those liars who are out there to get me, filling the air with their threats. I'm sure now that I'll see God's goodness in an exuberant earth. Stay with God. Take heart. Don't quit. I'll say that again. Stay with God. That was Psalm 27 from the Message Bible. Very powerful. And a more English way to say it that has a lot more feeling and understandable in the way it was given in the beginning. David's faith in the power of God sustained him through many trials. Do not fear God because God is with you. He's inside of you. If you are saved, you are a holy temple that has the Holy Spirit dwelling in you. You are holy. The ground you walk is holy. The seat you sit in is holy because you have a holy person residing in you. 1 John 1, 5 says, The Lord is light. In him there is no darkness. Isaiah 5, 10, 50, 10 says, Who is among you that feareth the Lord, that obeyeth the voice of his servant, that walketh in darkness and hath no light? Let him trust in the name of the Lord and stay upon his God. 2 Samuel 22, 3 says, The God of my rock, in him will I trust. He is my shield and the horn of my salvation my high tower, and my refuge, my saviour. Thou savest me from violence. 
Placing your trust in the Lord is what saves your life. We all experience difficult circumstances and troubling situations. We're, we're not free from it. We should have it every single day of our lives. Like the economy, the finances, jobs, sons and daughters, that could be problems, as we all know as parents. World affairs, today politics, elections, we know all about that today. Food prices, illness, even the weather, and they call that depression the winter blues. And believe you me, there is such a thing as the winter blues depression. How do I know? I'm just looking at the winter blues outside the door with the snow and the ice. Lately, politics force you to make a choice. You're either far left or you're far right. There's no middle independence. Only enemies that need to be bullied, converted, and today I hear, re-educated. The Bible tells us that even in the midst of the turmoil, we may experience in our lives that God is good. And we always trust in him. First Peter 5, 7 says, Give all your worries and cares to who? God. For he cares about you. When I'm saying, that's easier said than done, isn't it? Handing it all over to him. Turning your back. Walking away. And saying, Lord, not my problem, all yours. I'm walking, I'm turning my back on it, and I'm leaving it on the cross. That's hard to do. Me and my wife have done that. So I know how hard that is. Where you've done everything you can as a parent. And then say, Lord, this is beyond anything I can do. The only thing I could do is leave it with you. But the Lord says, walk away. It's my problem now, not yours. I'll deal with it in my time. Not your time, but I would deal with it in my time. And let me tell you, that is such a weight lifted from your shoulders when you do that, right. where you hand it over and walk away and say, Lord, it's not mine, it's yours. It's like walking on air as you walk away. If you've done it, you know what I'm talking about. If you haven't done it, then your feet are like lumps of concrete, lumps of lead wading through the mud. Take off those millstones. Walk gently over everything. The Bible tells us that even in the middle of our turmoil, we may experience in our lives that God is good and we can always trust him. When we pray, we want to give, or we would want instant solutions, don't we? We want it done, well, I finished the prayer, it's already done. I'm going to walk through that door. And it, no, it's not. We want instant relief of freedom from anxiety. But it's a two-sided sword. God's part and your part. You have to believe that God is going to do it. And here's the best part. You have to believe in yourself that he's going to do it. The first part sees you. The second part, believing in yourself that you can do it. That's the hard part. That's the part you can't give over. When we pray, we want to be relieved of our fears. Instant reassurance. God is listening to our prayer with peace in our hearts. Always listening to your prayer if you got the heart of a prayer. If you don't believe what you're praying, don't pray. If you want something to happen, you believe it's going to happen, you pray with the confidence that it's going to happen. Not that it might, but you expect it to happen. Because Jesus said, whatever you ask in my name, he will do. 
But God's timing is not our timing. Some people don't like to wait for God. Some people get impatient and try to force God's hand, but really is the only way to find true peace and satisfaction. You won't find it nowhere else. Only through the Lord. Some people get impatient, force God's hand. God is good and God is faithful. Psalm 27 is a faithful prayer from David. God can be trusted in every single situation and circumstance because David communes with God and sings with joy, with a joyful heart. You should be joyful and singing in God's presence. Because where is he? Here. You should have the joy of the Lord. You know, I can tell sometimes whether they have Christ or not, just by looking at the countenance, just by looking at what they say. Look at how happy they are. There should be no depressed Christians around because you have the joy of the Lord. Amen. And rely on that. The question is, is your focus on God or on your own circumstances? Philippians 4, 6 to 7 says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be known to God, and the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. All of us at some stage of our lives need to make a choice. We can choose to focus on the problem or we can choose to focus on God. If you focus on the problem, the problem's only going to get worse because you'll create the problem. Man's worst enemy is, is himself. The quicker you hand it over to God, the quicker the problem goes away. It might not snap your fingers and it be gone, but the problem is not your problem anymore, but God's problem. Don't complicate the issues. Sometimes people hang on and 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 hang on so there's only one possible solution and that is hand it over to God. Well, why go through all the agony when you could have done that in the beginning? Why go around the country lanes Spending half an hour to get, or an hour to get there. Well, you could take the freeway and be there in 10 minutes. I find that hard sometimes. God has been with you in the good times and the dark times. And he's not going to leave you in the dark times because he will bring you out because he is light. Our salvation is the Lord. It's not a, it's not a hard, it's not rocket science, as Emerald used to say. Romans 8.31 says, when God is with us, who is against us? Wow, that's a, oh, that's a, that's a, I'll tell you, I can't get over how strong that is. If God is with us, who is against us? Because God's going to fight our battles for us. My question is, do you feel under attack this morning? I'm here to tell you, do not be afraid, because God is with you. And when it's difficult to sense his presence, God is with you, even when you can't see him. God is with you. Walking down the road, God is with you. Sat here this morning, God is with you. Go to work, God is with you. Why? Because God's inside of you. You have the Holy Spirit. Psalm 62, 6 to 7 says, He only is my rock and my salvation, my fortress. I shall not be shaken. O oh God, rest my salvation and my glory and my mighty rock. My refuge is God. God is all sufficient. We can trust his mercy, his grace, and his love in every circumstances during all the storms that we experience. Or will experience. And it's nice to know that 
things are going to happen before they happen, that God's already got them in control before you get there. And sometimes he sorted the problem out before you even know it existed. That's something worth thinking about, isn't it? Why am I having all the problems in the world and yet my friend over here don't have no problems? Oh, did I tell you that he's a Christian? That God is on his side? Who can be against him if God is with him? God has already sorted the problems out. You, you're traveling in a mire in the mud of problems. He's just dancing down the road. So we need to be confident that we can come to God with our problems, fears, and doubts. We need to listen to his voice, to his counsel. Stop trying to handle things on your own. After all, God's commitment to you, I'll say this again, God's commitment to you is greater than your commitment to him. If you desire a deeper relationship with God, you might have to move away and some of the things that's blocking the road of God getting to you. Books you read, movies you watch, music you listen to, all the rapping stuff, TV, programs, vampires, occults, bloody gillings, Satanism. Even words you use in everyday conversations can be blocking God. I always say a person that swears a lot has a bad vocabulary because you can hurt a person more with the right words than the swear words. So your words can become against you. Scripture says that when you stand before the throne, all your words are stored in heaven and they will come back and God will tell you all the words that you've said against him. How about you? Have you asked God like David did? He has promised that when we wait on him, we will see experiences in goodness, mercy, love, and grace. Here's Philippians 4, 6, and 7. Don't fret or worry. Instead, worry and pray by petitions and praises. Shape your worries into prayers, letting God know your concerns. Tell him. Don't hide them, because he already knows. He's just waiting for you to ask him for help. Before you know it, a sense of God's wholeness, everything coming together for good will come and settle you down. It's wonderful what happens when Christ displaces worry at the center of your life. Philippians 4, 6-7 that was. As the Hebrews say, we do not keep the Torah to be redeemed by God. We keep the Torah because we have been redeemed by God already. Psalm 23 tells you that you belong to him and he provides for you. You just don't sit back and watch. He provides for you. He helps you. The focus is not on him or on him, on me, but it's on a relationship of the two of you together. I know him, he knows me. A two-way stretch. The Lord takes care of all my needs. I don't get everything I want, but I'm not in want. Think about what you have at the moment. Think about the life you have at the moment. Think how much worse that life can be. Go to a third world country. Go to Africa. Go to other places and see how other people live. Brazil, children, scouring the rubbish tip that's just come from your house from the garbage can, hoping there might be just a little chicken leg with a bit of meat on it that you threw out. Or all that stuff in the fridge 
you brought home from the restaurant in takeout boxes and then decided, oh, I'm not going to eat it, I'll just throw it out. That's a luxury meal for some people. That can last them a whole week. In fact, it can last them a whole month on just one week's stuff you throw in your garbage can. Now look and see how good you have it, how the Lord looks after you. Ephesians 6, 13, 14. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to what? Stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand, stand again firm. That's Ephesians 6, 13, 14. The evil will be in the heavenly realms. The armor protects the, the spirit that is inside of you. The world is taking notes on your life in order to malign you and criticize you. People watch you and try and trip you up. If you concern yourselves with criticisms, you will forever be incapacitated. You need to shrug them off because you have the strength for the Lord. The Lord protects you. He's guiding you. Who can be against me when God is with me? Finally, what you need to know is this. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. So my final statement is, stand your ground. And after you have done everything and tried everything, stand your ground again. Stand still. Upright. Trusting in the Lord. And stand still. Protected. And I say all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Just one more song before we go.